Are you tired of getting stuck on a puzzle and not knowing where to go next? I will show you how to adopt a winning Sudoku mindset so that each roadblock you encounter on the way to solving the green cell instead becomes an opportunity to learn something about how to solve harder puzzles. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Look up here in block three where the green cell is. Notice you have a one cutting across row three and one coming up column eight. There's only two possibilities for a one in this block. And so I'm going to mark that using Snyder notation. Because if we can solve one of these cells, we can solve the other for a one right away. This might be a one. Well, greetings, friend. This is Puzzle 22 from Enthralling Sudoku, Volume 2 by Ashish Kumar. He put 100 World Championship Caliber Classic Sudokus in this Volume 2. And even though none of them require advanced strategies to solve, they are quite tough. Thank you, Ashish, for letting me feature your puzzles on this channel. You want to adopt the proper Sudoku mindset to solve this puzzle, you first have to identify where the restrictions might be. So we're going to use some more Snyder notation. Can't do any Snyder notation with the twos or the threes right now or the fours. You see there's no fours in the puzzle. But with the fives, if you look here in block one, you got a five cutting up on three and a five cutting across row one. So two possibilities for five. We'll put Snyder fives in block one. And then with the sixes, there's two places we can make Snyder marks. Across row nine and down column six, we can put Snyder sixes in block eight. And the same six, coupled with this six in column seven, put Snyder sixes in block nine. How about the sevens? Well, with the seven cutting across and this seven coming down, only two possibilities. And it's okay that the Snyder marks are not in the same row or column uh, you're just looking for the two possibilities there and then with the eights you'll notice you actually have three eights so these two eights and this eight force only two possibilities for an eight in block six you can look around with the nines but with these two nines there's no blocks that only have two possibilities so this is all you can do with snyder notation and you haven't solved any cells yet and so now where do you go well the expert mindset and I've seen dozens of experts look at this as they start looking for other types of restrictions. This time, by looking for two candidate restrictions or looking for pairs. What's really hard, and you're like, why can I not see where to go next in this puzzle? And I'll tell you why, is that there's usually a clump of cells you can look at that have five or more cells in a house, so any of the row, column, or block. This puzzle, there's no more than three in any block any row, any column. So your eyes cannot fixate on a particular place, a center of mass, as you may call it. Instead, we have to kind of create that by finding a pair. And the way to do that is to focus on these two cells right here. These two cells give us a pretty good restriction in this puzzle. You'll notice that now a 1 and 9 cannot be in any of those three cells. Coupled with this 1 and 9, a 1 and 9 cannot be here. So where can the 1 and 9 be now in column Seven. Only in these two cells, they're a conjugate pair. The one has to be in one of those cells, and the nine has to be in the other. And so this is called a hidden pair. Whenever two candidates are limited to the same two cells in a house, then they can be the only two possibilities for those two cells. That's a hidden pair. You can remove all other possibilities in those two cells. So what does that mean for us? You notice there's an eight right here. Well, I just told you that only a 1 or 9 can be the value of this cell. So we can safely remove that 8, displace that Snyder mark, and we can solve for an 8 right here. You have now solved your first cell in this puzzle, and we're just getting started. And before I move on and show you the next pair you need to find, I want to hear from you. How well can you spot hidden pairs? Drop it in the comments. Help me grow the best Sudoku community on YouTube. I'd love to hear from you. I answer every comment. So there's another pair that we have to look at. We just you just created a restriction here. Now we have five cells filled out in column seven. So one, five, six, seven, nine. We're looking for two, three, four, six, and eight. Well, we'll notice right here we have three and an eight. That's only a two, four. So that is only two possibilities or two, four. 
And you look down here, uh, you could have, you know, a two, six, or excuse me, a two, four, eight here, three, four, eight there, and two, three, four, eight right there. However, with this three, you only have two possibilities for three now in column seven, and they're restricted to uh, column seven here in block nine. So this is actually a claiming pair of threes. So now the threes can't be in these spots because if you put a three over here, you have no place to put a three in column seven. And what that also does is with these threes now, you can put nine or threes here in block six. So you're creating some more restriction here. So let's, let's focus here on this two, four. We can't put another pair down this way. How about going across? What are the values for these cells here in row three? We got a one, three, nine. We need a two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's a lot. We know this can't be an eight and it can't be a five. And then this cell can't be a six. This cell, you'll notice can't be a six, seven, or an eight. This cell cannot be a five, six, seven, or an eight. And this cell not be a two or a seven. Okay, you notice something about row three now? Yes, you probably notice that we have another two, four pair in row three. And so this is a naked pair. The hidden pair is when candidates are limited to the same two cells. A naked pair is when those two candidates are the only possibilities for those two cells. So with this naked pair, now a two and a four have to be in these two cells because nothing else fits. You can remove a two and a four from every cell outside of those two cells in that row. So all these cells, we can remove the two and a four. And we're gonna be able to solve another cell. Realize now you're just starting to build a solve path. Each solve self is gonna give you another clue. This is how the experts work. They see what they get. And they see, okay, is another clue. What can I do with it? You may notice there's only one possibility for this cell now. Can't be a two or four. It's got to be a five, which would displace this Snyder five right here and solve this cell for a five. We can move the five from right there, and we end up with a six, seven, eight naked triple here along row three. And so now put a couple fives on this grid. What else can we do with the fives? Well, with these two fives and this five, you can solve for a five right here. But realize we are still just getting started. You're going to unlock a few solve cells, but then you're probably going to get stuck again. So you got to pay attention to what we need to do next. With these two fives and this five, solve this cell for a five, displacing that Snyder six. And then with these two fives and this five, you can solve for five here in block five. And these two fives and this five, we can finish all of the fives in this puzzle. Now let's look at the sixes because we just created a an add of the six to the board. With these two sixes and this six, solve for a six right here. And with these two sixes, the only place for a six in block one is right there. And now with this six, you can displace that Snyder six and solve for a six in block eight. And so with these two sixes, now we are limited to Snyder sixes in block five and Snyder sixes in block or the marking is going to help you out for creating more good restrictions here. And what else can we do? Well, we've added the six here. You remember, this is part of a naked triple. Well, with this six, it means this cell now has to be a seven and that has to be an eight. And so now you've added two more candidates to the board, a seven and an eight. What does that do for you? These two sevens add a seven right here, which displaces our Snyder seven. It solves this for a seven. With these two sevens and this seven, we can put Snyder sevens right there. And then with this seven and this seven, Snyder sevens right here. Again, you're probably going to get stuck here, so keep following along. I can show you the next neat trick and mindset that the experts use. What about these eights? Well, with these two eights, you can put an eight right there. And then we can look at the threes. Because you have a three here and a three there. Solve for three in block eight. With these two threes, displace that Snyder three, solve for three in block nine. And if you 
Really good. Notice this. You probably notice that now the 8 cuts across. The only place left for an 8 in block 9 is right there. And with these two 8s and this 8, you can solve for an 8 in block 7. With these two 8s, you can solve for an 8 right there. So that was pretty good if you saw that you could go back here and then add a few more 8s. But now, it's going to get a little trickier here. And so far, all these strategies, naked singles, hidden singles, naked pair, hidden pair, claiming pairs, naked troubles, they're all found in my free Sudoku solving guide. Nothing more complicated than that. But this is where you probably got stuck again. Because Snyder notation at this point is not too helpful. And we still want to solve this green cell. So we want to focus on one of the candidates that are in that cell. How about the nines? You want to look at where the nines are applying pressure in this puzzle. Look here in block seven. You got a nine cutting across and a nine across row eight. The only place left for a nine is right there. Now, with these two nines, you squeeze a nine into block four. And this is the key to getting the right solve path to solve the green cell. We're not done yet. Because this nine now allows you to disambiguate the one and nine here in column seven. So realize you're just on the right solve path. Plenty of solving. We still got to find what this puzzle is giving you here. With this nine, we displace the Snyder one up here in block Three. And then with these two ones, solve for one in block one. And now I got a bonus tip for you. You want to start with the digit you just solved. See it goes, see if it can go into an adjoining block. And so this one, kind of look down here, can't go there. The one's got to be here. And then with these two ones, you put a one right here. And then with these two ones and this one, put one right there. Displacing that Snyder six, allowing you to solve for a six in block five. And in block four and so now you can go back and go okay i only have one digit remain i got a full house here in block seven i don't see a four in there so this has to be a four which is going to allow you to disambiguate that very helpful two four pair in row three and then was this four due to us in block nine well that's got to be your two and that's got to be your four awesome and now we're going to look here in column one I'm going to show you my neat naked triple trick. You might notice we have a 1, 3, 4 that is not in column 1. I got a 1 and 3 right here and a 1 repeated. Whenever you see that situation, you can solve all three cells. This is how the experts accelerate their solving as they move forward in the puzzle. Because now you can solve three cells. This has to be your 4. The only place the 1 goes right there, and this is going to be your 3. So now we can displace the Snyder 3. Solve for three here. And now the next trick I'm going to show you is actually the way that the experts solve. It's different than probably what you and I do. First thing we can do is finish off column nine with a two right there. And you're going here and you're going to do what they call sweeping the blocks. You're going to try to finish as many of these blocks as possible. Because there's no two in block four. You can solve for a two there and solve for the seven right there. Then you're going to come up here and we're going to sweep out block one. Because once you sweep out a block, you do not have to go back to it. And you're not going to spend a lot of time going and doing circles around the puzzle. And so we know I just saw the seven and the two here. Looking for a three and a four. I'm going to go down and pull the first one I see. There's your three. And then there's going to be your four. In order to get some more solving here in block one, excuse me, row one, and in block two, we're going to need to add a few more solved down here. Let's look at this full house. You notice that there's not a nine, so we can put a nine right there. And then you know a nine's got to be in one of these spots because it's a pointing pair, right? A pointing pair means that since the candidate is stuck in column five, in block five, a nine can't be anywhere else outside of the block in that column. So a nine can't be there anymore. And with this nine, we can solve for a nine right here. So we create more restriction. We're going to sweep out block three now. I don't see a two in there, so we can solve that for a two. And then I don't see a four and a nine here. Let's sweep out block six. So here's my four. There's your four, and there's your nine. And then you want to immediately go and use the last cells that you just solved. Those digits, can you solve them in the next block over? It sure can. These two nines and this nine, you can solve for a nine right there with these two fours. Well, for four right there. And I didn't have to look for full house. I just looked at these two digits and was able to solve for the four very 
quickly. And then with this four and this four, now we can start finishing up block two here. Because that's got to be a four. That's got to be a three. And then you're looking for a two seven. Well, they are able to get the two seven. You got to notice that there's a two right here, which puts a two in this spot. So there's your two, there's your seven. Sweep out block two. Seven is going to come down and solve right here in block five. Swept that out in the last block, block eight. You don't see a two. We recently solved for a two. So there's your two. And the last digit is a four. See if you can spot the naked and hidden pairs in this next video. Thank you so much for watching.